Yellowstone Narc's giant geyser erupts after more than six years of inactivity. Prior to last week's events, the last geyser erupted on January 29, 2014. Yellowstone National Park, Wyo. Last Sunday, the giantess geyser in Yellowstone National Park rumbled again after more than six years without erupting. According to the National Park Service, the rare but violent eruptions became giantess geyser feature. This fountain-type geyser erupts in multiple bursts that can soar as high as 200 feet into the air. Prior to last week's incident, the last geyser erupted on January 29, 2014. Some on social media were wondering if they should be worried about a volcanic eruption due to the recent activity in the park. No. The United States Geological Survey USGS, said in a statement. A tweet. This is what geysers do. 2020 or not, Yellowstone remains calm in terms of volcanic activity. Cool stuff to watch. However, a supervolcano lies beneath the surface of Yellowstone. The term, supervolcano, implies an eruption of a magnitude 8 on the Volcano Explosivity Index, VEI, which denotes the eruption of more than 1,000 cubic kilometers, 250 cubic miles, of magma. The three eruptions were about 6,700 and 2,500 times larger than the Mount St. Helens on May 18, 1980 in Washington. Together, the eruptions would have ejected enough ash and lava to fill the Grand Canyon, according to Yellowstone. Researchers also estimate that volcanic ash covered large parts of western North America during this eruption. Those living within 200 miles of Yellowstone will be in the ashes up to mid-calf. During the last eruption, the Yellowstone eruption area collapsed on itself, creating a giant submerged crater or caldera covering 1,500 square miles. The magmatic heat that powered that eruption, and two others, dating back 2.1 million years ago, is still powering the park's famous geysers, hot springs, fumaroles, and mud pots. The USGS says a major caldera forming eruption occurred at Yellowstone. The impact will spread throughout the world. Such a giant eruption will have regional effects such as falling ash in short term, years to decades, changes in global climate, the USGS website says. Dot. The parts of the surrounding states of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming closest to Yellowstone will affected by pyroclastic flows, while elsewhere in the United States will be affected by falling ash. The amount of ash decreases with distance from the eruption site. Such eruptions typically form a caldera, a large volcanic basin created when the surface of the ground collapses due to the pulling of some rock liquid, magma, underneath. Fortunately, the chances of an eruption of this kind at Yellowstone are extremely slim in the next few thousand years. The most likely explosive event at Yellowstone is actually a hydrothermal explosion, an eruption of a geyser that ejects rock, or a lava flow, according to the USGS. Hydrothermal explosions are very small, occur in Yellowstone National Park every few years and form craters several meters across, said the USGS. Every few thousand years, a hydrothermal explosion will create a crater several hundred meters wide. While the worst-case scenario for a giant Yellowstone eruption is dire and could have global implications, most recent eruptions at Yellowstone have been less explosive. According to the USGS, of the last 50 or so eruptions, nearly all have been simple lava flows. If it happens tomorrow or next year, 
the immediate impact will be minimal outside of Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone is routinely monitored for signs of volcanic activity. These methods include using seismographs to detect earthquakes and using GPS, Global Positioning System, to detect ground movements. The USGS said they had not detected any signs of activity indicating an imminent eruption. You wouldn't know it when you visit Iser Basin today. Comprised of two large pools, Midway's highlight is undoubtedly the Grand Prismatic Spring. But the Excelsior Geyser, or rather, its crater, is the first feature you walk across on the pavement. A billowing body of water flowing into the Firehole River, the Excelsior has been this way for most of its recorded history. But for a time, it was the largest geyser in the world. Some of the eruptions are estimated to be 300 feet high, 300 feet wide. Just imagine, football high water gushing up from the ground, rising to the height of a football field. And imagine the sound it makes when it hits the ground again. This was the case for the lucky visitor to Yellowstone National Park between 1878 and 1890. Visitors and dignitaries alike praised the Excelsior, but his most important endorsement, likely, came from the naturalist, environmental exemplar John Muir. He wrote at length about the virtues of the Excelsior in the Yellowstone chapter included in his book, Our National Parks. Near the prismatic spring is the powerful Excelsior geyser which is said to eject columns of boiling water 60 to 70 feet in diameter to heights of 50 to 300 feet, at irregular periods. It is the largest of any geyser ever found anywhere. Muir added that the Excelsior was incomparable. Nothing in this world can match it. New Zealand, Tapuea on Lake Taupo, Waikite on Rotorna, and two others are said to live in their waters occasionally to a height of 100 feet, while the famous Te Tirata at Rotomahana sometimes raises a boiling column 20 feet in diameter to a height of 60 feet. But all of this was far surpassed by Excelsior. In Muir's memory, Excelsior surpassed even the Great Geyser in southwestern Iceland, the spring whose original name, Geyser, inspired the name, Geyser, in the first place.